multiple machine you use to grind your bases. Um, this one in particular has a 350 millimeter wide belt, which makes it compatible with both skis and snowboards. It's also got this nice feature up on top, which is like a speed controlled wheel that guides your ski or snowboard across the um, belt at a controlled speed, giving you just better results. The uh, whole upper system can be looked and spun out of the way if you just want to do it manual. And then it's got two compartments. <clears throat> This upper compartment contains the belt, the drive wheel, a tensioning mechanism, and an idler wheel. It also contains an array of nozzles. Uh, these are what spray the belt down and keep it wet, which is really important in the ski and snowboard industry because uh, your metal edges you don't want to get them too hot, that will anneal them. They're a hardened metal and if you anneal them, you'll make it soft and that'll make it less sharp and more prone to damage and just ultimately bad results. So as much as you want to grab your belt sander from your garage and go after your skis, if you, you know, do that, you could easily damage them in an irreversible manner. So best advice I can give you is just take it to a ski shop, make sure you got a wet belt. And then the lower compartment, Contains a big fluid basin. Um, this is simply a giant metal bucket containing water. It has a shelf that is the support for this filtering um, bag. So when you're grinding away your skis or snowboard, it's gonna put off little bits of plastic. Those get caught in the fluid that all funnel down through this hose into this bag and that bag just catches it so it doesn't go back in your pump and keep it from circulating around the system, clogging your nozzles. Over here is the fluid pump, um, and then over here is the giant motor that drives a belt that drives the entire sanding belt. Um, on the back side of the machine, motors, electronics, fluid dispensing systems, and all that kind of fun stuff. Now this machine runs off three phase 220, which isn't really available in a residential area. So what I had to do is hook it up through a phase converter. This uh, combination of an electronic control box and motor turn single phase into three phase. The principle of operation is it basically spins the motor with the single phase and the motor outputs the three phase.